Let's consider a humorous part of chemical history, the law of octaves, where chemistry and music intersect. In 1866, John Newlands, an English scientist with musical aspirations, arranged the then-known elements in the order of increasing atomic masses. Remember, atomic numbers, protons, neutrons, electrons were unknown in the middle of the 19th century. Newland started with the element having the lowest atomic mass, hydrogen. Counting up, he ended at thorium, which at that time was the 56th element known. He found that every eighth element had properties similar to that of the first. There were some exceptions, as we'll see. He compared this to the octaves found in music. Therefore, he called it the Law of Octaves. It's known as Newland's Law of Octaves. In Newland's octaves, the properties of lithium and sodium were found to be the same. Sodium is the eighth element in his list after lithium. Similarly, beryllium begins an octave and magnesium ends it. We can look at the periodic table as he would have seen it. And let's start with, uh, let's start with lithium. Uh, and you can see that if we count up, we find at sodium the eighth element. Uh, better still start at fluorine. If we call fluorine dough, we would say fluorine, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine. And then we start over again with potassium. Now, there are some problems here. First of all, if you look at hydrogen, you find even if you ta take hydrogen as an ionic substance uh, in compounds, which it's not, it really has none of the properties of fluorine and chlorine. The other thing to notice is that he put cobalt and nickel together for the reason that his octave was failing at that point. And although co copper does form a plus one ion, its most common ion is plus two whereas potassium, sodium, lithium, and rubidium is plus one. Um, if, you, if you look at this, it's clever, and ultimately gives us a beginning of an understanding of the notion of an electron octet. But uh, Newland was simply a kind of a comic cul-de-sac in the history of chemistry, because about the same time Mendeleev published his table, which is the one that we commonly use today, or at least with the changes that Mosley introduced when they discovered the proton.